Hello and welcome to the Outman Podcast. I'm back with an episode. Lozzie is back, speaking in the third person. You know, it happens. It does happen. No Dan, no Jordan today. Dan's working late, so that obviously means he can't make the uh, live stream that we know what we normally would do at about six. And Jordan is, well, he's working, and then after work, he's trying to get the uh, 30 East Drive investigation finished. So I know he's got a lot of editing work to do on that. So I thought, as Dan can't do one and Jordan's going to be very busy this evening after work, I'll do a, a solo pod whilst I've got, you know, a little bit of time on the Thursday to do a podcast. So that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. Because we're here collectively, you know. You're listening to this. You're watching this. Thank you, by the way, for tuning in, whether it be listening or watching, or maybe neither, because there are some people, well, probably a lot of people, who just put shit on and don't listen to it or watch it. If that's you also, you're not going to know this, but thank you. Appreciate it. Obviously, maybe not as much now, because uh, it seems like the summer's officially dead. Like, shot fucking menendez style if you if you don't know who that is right there's a new documentary on netflix about the menendez brothers basically the tldr they shot their mother and their father the pair of them with shotguns in the face so what i'm saying is in in a really ass about face way is the summer has been Menendezed, because uh, it's it's done. Like it's, you know, like two three weeks ago, we were still getting like temperatures of like twenty two, twenty three outside. It's now plummeting. Like this morning, it was below ten. It was like eight degrees. So it's dead. It's official. Summer's dead. All right. Just want to let everyone know. Obviously. I'm talking about the UK. If you live in somewhere where, you know, your your summer ends and it's still like 25 degrees. In some ways, you're lucky. In other ways, I really do feel like I would have, well, killed myself because I can't live in a place this... I like winter. I do like the cold. I just don't know if I was necessarily ready for the summer to leave like it did or get menendez You know what I mean? Anyway, look, enough about the climate, because we could do a whole episode on the climate, which I probably wouldn't want to do, because, you know what I mean, gets a bit political after a while. So I've got something in my eye. Got something in my eye. I don't know what it is. Buckshot, probably. Again, that's that's a reference to the the Menendez brothers' um Netflix documentary, which I will shut the fuck up about now, because if you haven't watched it, what's the point? Like, it's not a episode about it, so let's just not mention it anymore, eh? <laughs> Easy. Uh, anyway, how are you all doing? I hope we're doing well, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a good day. I'm have, I've, I'm having a positive day, you know? I've been to the gym. Most of the machines were, you know, there waiting for me to place my fat ass on them and do whatever it is they're designed for you to do on. Uh, what else have I been doing today? I've been doing some domestic chores, you know. I'm domesticated. Some people say that doing household chores means you are a beta male. I don't agree. I think it makes you Sigma. I can't believe I've just said that on a podcast, for fuck's sake. I'm 30. I'm 30 years old, and I'm saying Sigma. Anyway, look, I've done some household chores, done some washing, even though it's now pissing it down. That's great. Um, So I've had to take the washing back indoors. Um, Not, you know, although I'm staying positive, the household chores have been quite a nightmare, to be honest. 
if I'm absolutely brutally honest, they are a nightmare. But they've got to be done, otherwise you live in a fucking hovel, you know? I mean, behind me, you see that green box down there? That's been there for fucking ever. Actually, it was down here next to me. But it moved. I moved it a couple of feet. I just need to sort shit out. Everything on display is kind of where more or less I want it. But everything in the background, apart from like the smaller things like pillows and shit on the couch behind me, I just haven't got round to scratch that. Couldn't be asked to do it. So now I'm having to do household chores, you know, just to help out. You know what I mean? I want to help out. I want to make the job easier. You know what I mean? I'm the good guy. I'm the good guy. Do you know what I mean? Please just validate me. Anyway, if you're listening to this, right, one, thank you for doing so, and two, you won't have a fucking clue what I was just on about because you've got no visual reference, all right? But I'll move on because I do need to recognise there are people that listen to the podcast, obviously, because, you know, podcasts back in the day when they were first coming up, they were audio only, no visuals, you know? So if you're listening to it, you're listening to a podcast or you're receiving a podcast the OG way. Just remember that. So today's episode, if you didn't read the title, which there are some people who just click on it, and I appreciate you, thank you very much, is going to be a kind of weird version of Would You Rather because I'm doing it on Reddit and I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, I know we've played games like Push the Button and we've done Am I the Asshole many times from Reddit, but this is uh, it's kind of new-ish for me because I always play Would You Rather kind of with your friends and currently sat here right now, I have none here with me. So but somehow just talk to you about the situations that people have kind of, I'd say, suggested on Reddit, and then we can discuss, um, by we, I mean me, and you just listen or watch, or don't watch, and just have it on in the background. Either way, thank you very much. So without further ado, let's just get into your job, mate. Without fucking around, Joe. Shut the fuck up, just do it. All right, all right. So I found some some Reddit posts on Reddit. I know, fucking totally just out there. You know, you don't expect that sort of shit on Reddit. These posts, right? So the first one: Would you rather poop in the only toy toilet at the party, knowing that you'll clog it up, or poop in the bushes in the backyard? Please hurry. Um, it would very much depend on whose party it was and how well I know or knew them. Because, like, for for example, like Jordan, Jordan and Dan, uh, the person, the not podcast Dan, the Dan I go to the gym with, who who's trained me, probably like my two best friends, right? So if I clog their toilets up, it's kind of going to be funny at the same time as being frustrating for them. But if it was at a party of someone that I didn't know that well and maybe it's like the first time meeting them, I don't know if I'd take that chance. You're speaking to someone, right? And it wasn't exactly the same scenario because... This was a whole different reason for me not shitting. But I, I'm sure I've told the story before of me. I know I have. I fucking know I have. But anyway, I'll tell it again. <laughs> Red in 2018, right? I didn't shit for the entire time I was there. And you're like, ha, it's only a weekend. I got early bird tickets. I got early bird tickets. So I, that was Thursday. 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning. And I, th- I think we actually went there on a Wednesday afternoon. So it was actually probably nearer six days than it was five. But anyway, so for far- over five days, I didn't shit. Let me just say, for whatever reason, you don't want to take a shit, whether it be social embarrassment or, in my case, I could not stand the condition and the cleanliness that the toilets where you could take a shit. I couldn't stand the levels of hygiene and cleanliness. I genuinely thought if I walked into one of those portaloos or they got they had like the trenches that they built these um basically these step archways that go along the trench right and they just have a hole on a, a seat with a hole in it and your shit goes in the trench i kid you not 2018 reading festival that's what some of the toilets were right and Right next to where the toilets are, there's two camping zones. If you camped, I think it was in yellow. It might have been yellow. I know yellow is definitely one of the um, colours. If you camped in yellow, right, you were a fucking absolute animal. Because you were just literally in the fucking, in the vicinity of multiple people dropping shits into a trench via their asshole. They didn't pick them up and put them there, although there were quite a lot of recreational use of drugs, so maybe there were a few people, you know, stroking the furry wall and actually turned out to be a bit of a puby turd. But anyway, right, that's why I didn't take a shit because I I really genuinely thought that if I went into these places, I was going to get Insta-AIDS or fucking cholera or something bad. Ebola. I mean, I don't know how bad Ebola was in 2018 at Reading. I don't know if there was any recorded cases, but I didn't want to be the one, you know? I didn't want to be patient zero, or I couldn't be patient zero because then I would have to ha- have had... Fuck! I didn't want to be patient one or two, right? So that's why I didn't have a shit. And I do not recommend that you don't shit. And when you need to have a shit, within reason, you should just have a shit. Because when I got back from Reading 2018, I cannot describe the pain that I was in and that I tried to hide. I don't know if I did it very well. But I would get, like, these sort of waves of pain that would just fucking crash into me, and I'd be like, Ugh! just standing there watching fucking some 81, some 81, some 41, for fuck's sake. Just standing there like, Ugh! yeah, fucking hell, I love this song. Don't fucking shit yourself. Don't fucking shit yourself. But yeah, I, I was fully tensed up. There's a couple of songs that I just didn't even pay attention to. Plus when Sun 41 were on, it was fucking dusty as shit. So all the mosh pits, you were just fucking eating mounds of dirt. Anyway, it's a different story. So it comes back to the original point of would you take a shit in someone's toilet at a party knowing that it will clog it up? It very much depends on who is throwing the party and how good your relationship with them is. Because if the only alternative is just dumping a shit in the bushes outside, when you might be putting your potential relationship with someone, like your first time of meeting them or being invited to their party, you're putting that at risk if you clog the toilet. you know. And if you're not around a lot of your friends... There's going to be nicknames. And I I would rather be the person caught shitting in a bush rather than the person known as clogging up the toilet at a party full of people I probably don't know that well. So, yeah, I would probably, in that scenario, with my track record, 
Um, if the, you know, would you rather is you get two options, you have to choose one. Obviously, with my history, I just not shit. But this being the game that it is, would you rather? In that scenario, I'd pick the bushes. I would. I'd be basically doing a bit of good for the garden, you know. I'll be fertilizing the the uh, the backyard. I think that's fair. Let let me know down in the comments if there are any particular ones that um that you would like to provide your answer for. You know, would you shit in the backyard or would you shit in the toilet knowing you're going to clog it up? That's you know, if you if you got that energy, you're a hero. If you can play that off with people that you don't know and ruin a potential friendship or romantic relationship, you know, you don't want to be known as the guy who clogged the toilet. Or maybe they are, there are some people out there who are attracted to that sort of shit. God, it takes a mean shit. I want him to pump me. Do you know what I mean? There are those, those people out there, I'm sure. This next one. Would you rather wash your hands more and stay home all day or literally fucking die? Ah, uh, well. Um, <laughs> well, depends how good your life is, really, what you value life. Um, so this spelt you're wrong, which I'm not going to have a go at him for because I can barely read and I'm shit at spelling. So there is a 50-50 chance I was reading that as your instead of your your. Um, would you rather wash your your hands more and stay home all day or literally fucking die? I mean, that was five years ago. So I'm guessing this was a COVID post. A bit of um satire. I guess I'd go with Wash your your hands more, I guess. Fairly uh, simple and easy, that one. Oh, this one looks a bit tasty. Would you rather have regeneration, regeneration powers or healing powers? Now, reading that, there's going to be some people who go, they're the same thing, but they have clarified underneath. Regeneration allows you to perfectly heal only yourself of every wound, disease, missing limb, etc., which makes you immortal. Healing allows you to heal yourself and others of almost all wounds, but you can't regenerate your own or someone else's limbs, head, etc. Don't forget to hit their arrows after you vote. There you go, doing a bit of a plug, do you know what I mean? Hit the arrows, four years ago this one. Hmm. This come down. This really comes down to whether you're you give a fuck about people. I guess. To, is it self preservation, or are you going to be like you know a modern day Jesus? Although I don't think Jesus actually healed anyone. I think he just gave people booze, which is as good as. You know, especially living in those days. Oh, fuck, I've got to drink this fucking water again. Worry not, fellow. It is now wine. Fuck, he's made the water wine. What a fucking legend. Wait. It's got a piss. I can imagine the, um, the scenes carved or chiselled into tablets. And I don't mean, you know, the old stone tablets, all right? Not this fucking iPad shit, all right? Yeah, I think it really comes down to whether you give a fuck about people or not, really. But it would be cool to be able to regenerate limbs, because then you could just... I mean, it's a pretty fucking gnarly business idea, but it just came into my head, right? You could pay people to chop your limbs off, knowing full well 
that they're going to regenerate. Like you could. No, I've just got that completely the wrong way. People could pay you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not some fucking masochist, right? You, you could get people to pay you to do damage to you knowing that you will basically survive anything that you do. Because there, there are people out there who love the thrill of just harming people, you know, getting into fights. There are people in out there into sick shit. You know, you could, you could offer someone the service of them delimbing you and making you a nugget. That was very Norfolk how I said that. Fuck nugget boy. But that is a service that you could provide. And might I add, you could pretty much charge whatever the fuck you wanted because, you know, you're the only fucking supplier in town. Well, there are probably still people who, you know, traffic people in just to do that shit to them and don't have regeneration powers, so they just die. But, you know, the, the business, there's a business idea there somewhere. Just, you know, apply it. Uh, healing is great because, you know, if you see someone in pain, just heal them. You know what I mean? I'm going to be, I'm going to be selfish and say, regeneration because that business idea is is going to be taken by someone else um it looks like there's a poll or something on this there is so of the well best part of what's what is that eight thousand ish over eight thousand people that voted um is that over eight hang on no, it's not a seven thousand. It's under seven thousand. But anyway, don't matter. No, it's not. It's over seven thousand. Fuck me. It's under eight thousand. I've really fucked that. So now we're established. I can't do maths. Uh, I can't read that well. I can't write. Uh, spelling and writing is just, just. I'm I'm basically borderline retarded. Borderline's probably a bit. Well, it's probably a bit kind. But anyway, 2.9 thousand people voted for regeneration and 3.8 thousand voted for healing. So, yeah, uh, a time where, again, this post was from four years ago, so we would have been in the COVID era. Some say we're still in it. But, yeah, maybe all we really wanted was to heal people then. I don't know. I reckon if that poll was taken now again, uh, regeneration would be being healing up. In my in my personal opinion, what the fuck is this? Would you rather be able? You're gonna have to bear with me because some of these aren't written very well. The potential of them not being written or punctuated well, plus me not being able to read right or spell that well is a recipe for fucking disaster but we're here we're here would you rather be able time do jit jutsu from naruto or magic from harry potter don't forget to upvote slash downvote i don't know what they mean i've never watched naruto uh, I'm guessing he's got some sort of power to adjust time. Is that correct? Let me quickly see. What is Naruto's power? What is Naruto's power? The one above, the one that I'm about to read out, I've had to just skip because I don't know anything about Naruto and I don't, understand what jutsu means and i've just searched it and i still don't understand what it means so for that one with not knowing what jutsu means 
and not liking Harry Potter, I think it's best I skip that one. But you guys can vote for yourself, okay? You you guys can vote for yourself. If you really want to, you can go onto this Reddit um, or this subreddit and, and vote for it. So this next one. If you were a peasant in the 14th century, which language would you rather speak? Now, there's no options for it. There is a poll underneath. Uh, one says, I can't read, and the other one says, I can't read. Very funny. Very good. Not the best for, you know, actually getting a proper answer, but funny nonetheless. <laughs> I did see this one. This one was towards the top Um, when I looked earlier on. It's quite funny. I am actually letting Reddit name my baby. Please don't pick Chungus. It's a joke. And then everyone picked Chungus. That's that's why we love the internet. You know what I mean? That's what we love. Which power would you rather have? Again, would you rather... Normally, it's two possible options, but they've given all the usual ones, pretty much. Invisibility, a super strength, flight, teleportation, mind reading, and underwater breathing. Now... For a bit of context, the vast majority of people have picked teleportation. Four point eight thousand people who have voted in this picked teleportation. Uh, interesting that only two hundred sixteen people picked underwater breathing. I tell you what, the amount of people out there who've got some weird shit going on with mermaids, you know, like wanting to become a mermaid or being excited by mermaids, that number does surprise me a bit. Invisibility, that also surprised I thought that would be higher. I guess out of all of them, teleportation is the most useful day-to-day. -day. It saves a lot of time. Mind reading is a good one. Flight is like, teleportation but you want to enjoy the journey you know what i mean super strength is you know that's cool only 390 people picked it but yeah i think teleportation would be mine as well just because it saves so much time i mean again go and pick your own answers i don't even can you i don't think you can actually answer these because they're all closed never mind <laughs> never mind <laughs> Oh dear, oh, that's a, that is a shit one. Okay, would you rather get? I don't know what that number is. Is that ten thousand? I think yeah, ten thousand because I've done it again for the other one. So would you rather get ten thousand euros or a million euros? But if you choose the more popular one, you'll get nothing. This is a very interesting reverse psychology. Probably not, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm getting at. Mm, I, I've not seen this one, but my initial reaction would be pick 10,000. But then part of me is like, ah, oh, but and then everyone would have thought that everyone would pick 1 million euros. So then they'd go to 10,000 just to secure the smaller bag. But then I'm thinking in my head, because we're all doing it, I hope, we're all going through this same process. So firstly, I'm like 10 grand. Then I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. I think people would expect people to pick a million, so then roll back to 10 grand. So now I'm like, do I pick a million because they would have picked, they would have wanted a million, but then to not be in the more popular group, they would have picked 10,000? It fucks with your head. You know, it's like the carrot in the box thing that they played on um, Cats Does Countdown. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch Carrot in the Box. Great game. Great game. Um, I'm going to go... A million. Go big or go home. 
That's what I say. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, 5.7 thousand people picked the a million euros and then the 1.4 thousand picked 10 thousand euros. So not that they actually got this money, but it feels like I lost. Or well, because I did. Uh, try to make an F without seeing what others put. And everyone just typed F. Predictably. Okay. Would you rather earn one dollar for every step you take or a hundred every two hours? Fuck, this is... um Depends what you do, isn't it? If you're a postie... If you're a postie... You're going to pick steps. But if you're disabled and you've got any limbs, you're going to take the 100, ain't you? you? you got to. 100 every two hours. I mean, you're getting, you're getting $1,200 a day for doing fuck all. That's good wage. That's fucking good, right? But you've got to earn the the $1 for every step. Because if you're doing less than 1,200 steps a day, no, sorry. If you're doing less than... mm, That is a good point. I've not realised... I've not thought about this very well. Fucking sweat. So $100 every two hours. There are 24 hours in a day, right? So half that, 12. 12 times 100 is 1,200. And you could get the same amount of money by just walking 1,200 steps. If you've got limbs and you can walk and you're not doing above 1,200 steps a day, then you are probably dead. Like, I know I've been to the gym, but I'm on 5,500 steps right now. So I would have, well, I'm actually closer to 5,600. I'm 20 steps off. No, 16 steps off. So I would have five and a half grand so far today. Easy then. Again, if you're disabled, you ain't got legs, you've got a wheelchair, just take the 100. I'm sorry. But that is unfortunately the scenario. You got you got to get something out of the fucking deal, right? Don't, you know, if there might be a possibility that you could walk again, then go for the dollar and then dollar every step. I'd love to know how like how that's paid. Do you get paid per step, or do you get paid per thousand steps? You know what I mean. Also, who's who's? I'm thinking too much about this now. But who's checking? You know, how do how do they know how much you've walked? Because saying this to you now on the podcast, I used to have a pedometer, which is something that counts your steps. I know, I'm a man of much, much knowledge. Now, when I didn't like a number that I'd seen on the pedometer, or the step counter, whatever you want to call it, when I saw a number that didn't reflect what I thought was the effort that I put in, which was most of the time fuck all, I would shake it to make the number higher. So I could be like, I've walked I've walked 8,000 steps today. And no one gave a fuck anyway. So I want to know, can you, you can't, can this be something that you can effectively game the system? Or beat the system because if you can now that's a career I'm just going to put my watch on charge shit oh fuck I hope that's charging so yeah it's going to be a dollar every step it's got to be otherwise you just earn yourself out of money if you can walk. I don't. I don't want to keep stressing the point, but if you can't walk, 
take the hundred every two hours? That that question is very discriminatory to disabled people, especially people in wheelchairs. I'm just saying, I don't want to be that guy. I've gone woke. I've gone woke. What's the next one? Oh, most people picked the dollar. Five and a half thousand people picked the dollar, but two, almost two and a half, picked the hundred dollars every two hours. Fair play. Would you rather the world instantly goes back to the way it was before all of this started happening, politically, economically, socially, or endure six more months of escalating madness, but see major positive permanent changes in all three categories? I mean, this was four years ago again. A lot of these posts, because I've picked like, the top performing posts of the last like 10 years or all time. I think it might be all time actually. Uh, A lot of these are going to be from quite a while ago, but again, this one would have been during the times of COVID. So it's got to be six months of escalating madness to see major permanent changes, positive permanent changes in all three categories. By the way, wouldn't happen in this the the current setup we had and it's interesting because this is posed as a question i i guess as someone who was probably stuck indoors had enough and was just like what the fuck is going on i hate covid i hate all the things that happened because of it uh do i hope that things get better in six months and just do what i'm told or would I rather the world go back to where we were basically amoebas, maybe a bit further along the evolution than that? Let's go back to cavemen and cave women, because there were only two genders then. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, interesting because we went through the period, which well. We went through more than six months of escalating madness, but I wouldn't say we got major positive permanent changes, though. I'm just speaking from the UK perspective here. I mean, we booted one lot of knobheads out, and in all honesty, we just got another load of knobheads in. I don't really see there's much change. I don't really see it. But anyway, I'm not going to go down that road. Political stuff, yeah. So basically, you go back to tribes of people just killing each other for the measly bit of food that is readily available, or continue for six more months hoping that there's going to be positive permanent changes. I mean... Me being me, and how I am physically, my life at the moment isn't as hard as it would have been back in the days of caveman. Just objectively thinking about this, I am not the fittest person in the world. I wouldn't even say I'm the fittest person in my household, right? So now now I would have to be expected to go out and hunt things that by you know all accounts are designed to end my life. I don't I don't see that going very well. I don't see my life of being a caveman being one of the early settlers I don't see that as lasting very long. However, I do think that I've probably got at least six more months currently as I am now. Potentially more. So it's got to be the six months, surely, just on that basis. I mean, if I go back, if the vast majority of us, if we went back to the times where we didn't have all the technology, we didn't have the knowledge that we do now, even the basic knowledge of 
don't eat that fucking thing because you'll die, you know? Not having that basic knowledge, I feel that presently, especially my generation kind of upwards, we'd be fucked. I don't know how to grow shit. I don't know how to fucking take care of cattle or animals that I provide food. I don't have to do that. I'm not a farmer. I come from a place where there's quite a few farms. I'll get stuck. My my knowledge of farming is Clarkson's farm and I got stuck behind a tractor once. That's my knowledge of farming. Also I may go I go through or I go down the Acle Strait, which has a kind of farmland on either side, and you see some animals. That's that is my limit of my knowledge. So I'd be fucked. I'd have to hunt for things that are probably not wanting to be hunted. And in not wanting to be hunted, evolution has given them the gift of a jaw that could pierce my entire fucking body with one chomp. End my life in a fucking matter of seconds. So I think six months of enduring escalating madness to see some changes would be better. Don't know what you guys think. Would you rather have two million dollars now or a guaranteed ten thousand dollars a month for the rest of your life? I've heard this before. Um depends what you want to do. Depends also how far along in life you are. Because if you're someone who is, you know, got an illness or you're old, you're probably going to take the two mil. However, the things that you could do with that sort of money per month, I mean, it's 120 grand a year, right? You've just basically got 120 grand salary for fuck all a year yes you have to i don't know if you have to pay taxes on it i don't know probably because it's in the u.s you know you get taxed for fucking everything having said that me speaking from the uk we get taxed for fucking everything too we technically have a tax to watch tv that the vast majority of people don't fucking pay that i know anyway i know there's a lot of people who do but i definitely don't because i don't watch live tv i don't even have an aerial in the back of my tv uh i've just in case you know the tv license fucking drones see this right i don't even have an aerial on my house for some reason when i first moved in there was two one each end of the roof and they both got fucking blown away by the storm that we had in 2020 when I first moved in in February, they both got fucked. One of them, literally, the wind blew that hard that it snapped the aerial in in half, like the antenna. And then the other one fell down and had to be removed. So I literally don't even have the capability to have live TV. Do not knock at my house, you wankers. Anyway, (laughs) right? You get taxed for anything here. Fuel, food, fucking car insurance, anything has tax on it. VAT does my nothing. Just it does, but again we're going politically again. I personally would take ten thousand a month because you could invest two million dollars right now if you got it, and then years to come it would it would benefit you. But if you continued investing like $5,000 of the 10 that you get per month over like a few years, I think you'd be better off in the long run. So I'll go for the 10 grand a month. Just trying to think how long it would take you, how many years it would take you to get to 2 million. So 2, 4, 6, 5. So every five years so it'll take you 10 years to get to a mill no 
10 years to get to 2 million. Is that right? Let me have a look. Let's have a look at the old calculator, eh? Right, $10,000 per month times 12, obviously. You know, I think we're all in agreement thus far that there are 12 months in a year. Okay. Right, times that by 10. Why did I think that gets you... It's because of the it's because of the two hundred thousand, the twenty thousand. Sorry, I fucked it. So, is it fifteen then? No. Okay, sixteen. No, nineteen. Okay, it would take you nineteen months, nineteen years. Fuck me, nineteen years to get to two million. But that's just you accruing the money. If you then invest the money or half the money every month i think you'd hit two million a lot quicker again my maths has really shone through there oh tesco's are going to be delivering my shopping tonight that's great that's fantastic any subs you're going to see or you're going to hear my reaction live to see if there are any subs uh in my my order um there's no subs. That's fucking fantastic. Let's go. The last order I had, uh, the last order I had with those, um, they subbed. Uh, you know, not a shout out or not like trying to, you know, get anyone sacked. I used to work at Tesco's, right? And I, on occasion, I used to work. Well, help out on the dot com orders online orders section or department. Give you a fucking trolley, a scanner, they had loads of symbols on the side which corresponded with which parts of certain people's order that you'd put the food and stuff in. Right? So I ordered three lots, by the way, don't know if all supermarkets still do this. But Tesco's do. For the vast majority of products, you can only order three items of the same product. Doesn't count for like loose fruit and vegetable, but for things like water, it does. So I ordered three lots of bottled water. Packs of 12, three of them. Thank you very much. I got the email through. They said there's been a substitute. And I was like, sick. I wonder what it's going to be missing this time. And the way that it read, and again, not the best reading skills. I just want to put that out there. It was probably my mistake. But I don't understand why they did this. So I thought that the particular water that I picked, nothing special, just a Tesco's own brand, 195 for 12 bottles of 500 milliliter water, right? What a fucking fantastic podcast. We're like, what, 50 minutes in-ish? And I'm talking about water. Like buying water. Purchasing with money water. Fucking hell. So, Tesco, water, 195, 500 milliliter, pack of 12. I'm like, I'll have three of them because I can only buy three. Can't have four, you can buy three. So then they said, we don't have that water and the way it read sent seemed to me like they only had two packs of that tesco water and they were going to be nice and top it up with pure life water and i was like okay fair enough that's cool you give me a slightly better in terms of um value product because it costs more and i'd be charged the same price i was like banging turned up one pack of water. And I was like, eh? What? The driver was like, oh no, they substituted the three packs of water for one of them. And I was like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hang, on, hang on. They substituted three packs of water for one pack of water. In what fucking realm does that make sense? 
I would honestly rather you just said you didn't have any and then just not charge me for any of the fucking thing. Well, I just didn't understand why they did that. I didn't understand it. And then this this one, I figured out a nice little play here, right? There are companies that do 24 packs of water. And I've just got two of them. Fuck the system, innit? I'm so sad. So sad. Because I actually genuinely feel like I have played the system there when I really haven't. They've just got more money out of me because it costs more. Anyway, fucking hell, I've done myself in. Uh, No substitutes tonight. So, yeah. 10,000 a month is what I'd pick. And most people picked the 10,000 a month. Logical. Understand it. Okay, would you rather have time to stop every time you fall asleep? Hang on. Would you rather have time stop every time you fall asleep so you could sleep for however long you want without wasting a minute of your day or have the ability to sleep only two hours a day and never feel tired? Ah, that's On the face of it, that's a difficult one. I wouldn't want time to stop because then everything. Does time only stop for you or does it stop for everyone else? Because if it does stop for everyone else, then you're going to be, if you've got like a partner or something, you're going to be just not awake at the same time as them. So I would personally go for the sleep only two hours a day and never feel tired and not have any health defects i mean i'm assuming that is the case with the two hour sleep option let's see what people put oh there there was no poll for that one never mind i just i was just like started scrolling thing hang on a minute this is not correct which game of chance would you rather play a 99.99 percent chance of getting 500 and 0.01% chance of dying. 95% chance of getting $10,000. Or five percent uh, with 5% chance of dying. 85% chance of getting $100,000. But comes with a 15% chance of dying. A 60% chance of getting $1 million. With a 40% chance of dying. I don't think it's worth playing. Here's why. So, this depends how much of a gambler you are. I reckon that the reason people, most of the people have gone for the 85% chance of getting $100,000 with only the 15% chance of dying is because that the percentages look better, right? Obviously, you've got a fifteen percent chance of dying, but there's an eighty-five percent chance of you getting a hundred thousand dollars. So, to risk your life for ten thousand dollars, however small percentage chance it is that you will die in this scenario, just doesn't seem really worth it. Also, if you're risking your life for effectively $500 with only, albeit, a 0.01% chance of dying, again, it's not worth it. Now, you've got some mega fucking giga chads who have picked 60% chance of getting a million dollars with a 40% chance of dying. Those have got fucking balls of steel. I just wouldn't play the game. Because life-changing money in my opinion uh, in my opinion isn't $100,000 anymore. It probably was, probably like, you know, maybe even 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I genuinely don't think $100,000 is life-changing. Cuz it's also if you put it into pounds, it's under 100,000 then it doesn't sound like much at all. A million can change your life. 
change your life, definitely. But with a 40% chance of dying? Ooh. I don't know. I just wouldn't play the game. I'd I'd uh I'd play it safe on that one. Okay. Which life would you rather live? This is gonna be I could just I haven't read this one, but I can just feel this is gonna be weird. I might be wrong. Option A, live the life of a child your for your whole life. You get to live in a nostalgic year where you live your perfect childhood. At the end of the year, your memory as well as everybody else's memory is reset to believe it's the start of the year again. Society will never progress or change and you'll be stuck reliving the same year and making new childhood memories for the rest of your life. You will live a normal lifespan though you will always be a child and not be able to keep track of your real age as you will always believe it's the same year. Everybody except for you and your friends will be non-sentiment, non-sentient life disguised as believable human beings. Fucking hell. Right, what's option B? This looks like a long one. There's multiple options. Oh, my God. Option B, in the far future, you're the last human and you've been put in a space pod and permanently attached to a a virtual reality system that feels exactly like real life. The space pod will keep you healthy and alive until you die of natural causes. You are aware you're in a virtual reality. Within this virtual reality, you will be able to create anything you can imagine except sentient life all virtual beings you create will very will very obviously be non-sentient. You may create your own landscapes, toys, video games, movies, whatever you want. But sentient life or life that feels sentient is off limits. All virtual beings you create will act like video game NBCs, NPCs and will barely be able to hold a proper conversation. That's such... That's such a shit option. That's worse than option A. Option C. In a peaceful post-apocalyptic world, you're free to wander the remains of human cities and interact with the many of the survivors. This world is very peaceful and easy to live in, despite being post-apocalyptic, meaning all you need is food and water to survive, which isn't too hard to acquire, and other survivors may even get food and water for you. You will have choices in what you'd like to do with your life and where you like to take it. You were born after the apocalypse, so you do not long for the life you had before because this is the only life you've ever known. You will appreciate what you have rather than grieve for what you don't have. Option C is the better one so far, in my opinion. Option D. You live a harsh life in a fantasy medieval world with magic and monsters, you will go through many hardships and painful times. However, your life will be incredibly interesting as if it were some sort of TV show or book. You will accomplish many great things in your lifetime and feel a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment in your life. And the hard times will only make the good times feel even better. Well, option A is live as a child your entire life. I mean, there were positives about being a child. You weren't responsible for paying mortgage or rent, you know. But I feel like there's only so many times, you know, you can go through the same year. You have to pick one year and stick to it. That's out. Option B is just horrific. The whole point of virtual reality, the plus point is it being that good that you don't know that everyone is just an NPC. If if the realism of the NPCs and the things you created and non-sentient people, if that wasn't a thing and it was just you spent your entire life in virtual reality and you died of natural causes, I feel like you could experience a good life in virtual reality. But with not having anyone sentient and everyone basically being a really shit video game NPC, you just couldn't. 
You just couldn't. C is nice. I love the post-apocalyptic set, the setting. You know, it's my favourite setting of, well, Fallout. Very uh, clearly is something that I like. And the the main setting for that is po- post-apocalyptic. So I'd probably be right at home with that one, especially I don't have to fight anything. People aren't going to raid me for shit in this scenario. Some people even just give me food. I must say, though, option D sounds cool too. So out of the two, I'd say C and D and are the, the two I'd personally go for. But let's see what everyone else put. Uh, same is what I said. Option C is the one that won with 2.4 thousand people picking it and then 2.2 thousand people picked option D. Option A got 426 votes and option B got 375. I just don't see how option B or A were good in any way. B was probably the worst. A was then the next worst. And C or D, I, I would just interchange. I guess I'd go C because I like the per- post-apocalyptic setting. But yeah, fucking hell. Well, that was Would You Rather. A bit of a weird twist on Would You Rather because some of the ones didn't have, like that one, that had four options. Normally it's just two. But anyway, I don't make the rules, you know. I just play the game. And if the game's shit, the game's shit. I don't know where I'm going with that, but thank you everyone for watching, listening. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Uh, even if you just put it on in the background and you just feel, fuck it, I'm going to waste an hour of my day or waste an hour watch time on, on YouTube. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Up the Atma. Bye-bye for now.